Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you also, I'm sure at this point in your career, you've crossed paths with Udo. Is that safe to assume? Yeah. We've never really had a, you know, decent conversation, but we have crossed paths. Okay. I was just going to ask if you if you've had any conversations because I feel like I've read in the press where he's been pretty complimentary towards you. You know, it doesn't seem like a lot of smack talking and that sort of thing. Like, yeah, it sounds like you've got his respect. Well, I, I I've never read read anything really good, but I mean, I've got nothing bad to say about him. Obviously, I was a fan. I still am. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I hope you know. That would be nice. Yeah. I, th- I think the longest conversation I ever had with Uvo was when we opened up for Accept and at Lemoore. It was, had to be, oh, wow. 80, I'm going to say 80. Fuck. Six? It was balls because they, had, they were on tour with Kiss. Okay. They played, oh. they played Radio City with Kiss that night and then came over and headlined Lemoore. All right. And at the end of the night, Went down to their dressing room. He was, and he was, him and the crew, he was the only one down there from the band. I went, I just wanted to meet the guys, you know. Went down there and he was the only one. And we were having a, his, his English was not good at all. And we were just starting to talk and make a little sense. And Gabby comes down the stairs, right? Gabby. And she looks at him. She goes, Udo, on the bus, Chanel. And he goes, let's go. <laughs> he just got up and walked up the stairs. Wow. Uh, uh, well, so it wasn't a long conversation, but it was memorable. Oh, yeah, it was memorable. <laughs> was that your first meeting with Gabby? Yes, we didn't meet. We just were in the right, same. But you were, you, you were a passerby to her. Yes. I mean, she didn't say, hey, get out of the way. Why no. are you talking no. to Udo? It was just Udo on the bus, Schnell. No, she really didn't even enter the the room. It was just. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, from the bottom of the stairs. Now, wow! Oh, yeah. Like the hook coming out from the side of the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, well, she's still a force to be reckoned with, but you know, that's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> so, what got you hooked on rock and roll, Mark? What was the what was the moment? What was the album? What was the concert? What was the band you saw on Beatles. television? Case closed. The Beatles, man. Yeah. I was a kid. You know, I was a kid. My fu- my brother was nine years older than me. He came home one day and he had the the f- single with uh, "I Want to Hold Your Hand" and uh, the flip side was mm-hmm. "Saw Her Standing There." Mm-hmm. And Put that on about a 45, put it on. And I'm, I was in like second grade. I lost my mind. Wow. <laughs> I was just like, what is this? Yeah. What the hell is this? I don't even know how to act now. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty. I remember going to the record store every time there was a new album, going to buy the singles, going to buy the records, you know. And then I got into obviously many other things, but that was the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. so I want to... I remember one of the stories that you and I were chatting and you told me about, I think it was Lamore. correct? Feel free to correct me. I'm, I'm fully okay with being wrong. I think happened at Lamore. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. I got to play there with the toys a few times. It was fucking great. Great time. Both of them. When there was two different ones. So yeah. Lamore East. Yep. So, actually there was Korea for a while there was oh really Maurice was in Queen and then there was Far East in Long Island wow. now, I don't think that one ever really did that well legendary and part of part of the whole scene mm-hmm. so so you were we were hanging and you told me a story about Iron Maiden had done a show oh yeah and, and they came and by they were, playing, they were playing the next night Oh, they were playing the next night. So they had a night off, but they were, they were they there. Night off and they, they came, came to the club. club. Yep. You tell the story. What? Tell us how that transpired. T.T. Quick was playing, this, right? T.T. Quick, okay. Yeah, T.T. Yeah. Quick was playing. We set it up. It was T.T. Quick, but we had a steady Thursday night at Lemoore. We played it, you know, every Thursday night. Uh, we were the headliner. And, I mean, you know, you're doing six, 700 people. On a Thursday night, not too shabby. It was respectable. Great. 
Um, so we, you know, we pretty regular. It was Glenn Evans was in the band at that point. We were just at the EP hadn't come out yet. It had to be 83. I'm going to say. And, uh, the own, one of the owners, Mike comes back into the back, into the dressing room. And he goes, Hey, the guys from Iron Maiden are here. They want to know if it's okay if they hang out in the dressing room. And we're like, what? <laughs> like, we're going to say no. Right. So I was like, yeah, of course. Tell them to come on back. You know, and of course we had a party going on back there. It was 1983. What do you expect? Yeah. And uh, so they all come back, hung out. And we asked them, you guys want to play? No, nah, we don't want to play. We don't want to play. There was the opening act was on. I don't remember who it was. So change over. They're still hanging in the dressing room. We're getting ready to go on and and we go on and we're play. I we must have played about, you know, five or six songs. And my guitar tech goes, Hey, come here, come here. I'm like, what? They want to come up and play. Well, tell them to come on up and play. I'm fine with that. It's great. Just like so I'll tell them, I'll tell them after the next song. Okay. We did the next song. And they're starting to walk up. We're starting to walk off. I'm going to introduce the band. And the crowd knew they were there. And you should, the, the swell in the crowd just went like from, from, ah, to, oh, like, you know, <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't miss Dave Murray walking out of stage. They were like, oh my God. And Steve Harris. And uh, so I'm introducing the band and I'm getting ready to introduce the band. And actually, I, I'm trying to remember how it went. I have, and I have a cassette recording of this. My my sound man, brilliant that he was, had the foresight to push the button, the record button on a cassette. Wow. Um, I think I walked off before I, I before I introduced him because I figured they didn't need any introduction. And as I'm walking off, Steve Harris just grabbed me by the shoulder and he goes, "Where are you going?" I said, "Well, I'm going to." He goes, "Bruce isn't here, mate. You're singing." <laughs> when, what? He goes, he goes, well, well, I'm like, okay. He goes, he goes, what are we doing? I go, oh, how about, how about Rothschild? <laughs> oh, Rothschild. Oh. I'm going, I lost my shit, man. Oh, man. Shit, I didn't sleep, for, I didn't sleep for three days. <laughs> the adrenaline flow was just like, oh, Wow, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> the crowd just lost their freaking minds. And then we had to finish the show. It's like, oh my God, how do we top that now? <laughs> yeah. Good so, question, Jason. So, I had no so, idea. Yeah, he told me that story, and I was like, oh, one man. day we're going to have him on the podcast. I'm going to make that him away. fucking tell that story. Yes. Yes. I have to find that cassette, and I have to take it and, you know, run it onto a hard drive. Yeah, wow. get it digitized. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That so, is amazing. so now, and I think Dave knows this already, that right there, if you could put it in a bottle, that's what, how I felt having to go <laughs> be <laughs> with except for a week. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh my God. You know, I don't think I slept for a week. <laughs> when I got home, you know. So, uh, very, wow, very, that's an amazing story. Because at that time, if it's 1983, they're on the Peace of Mind tour, so they are like true at the peak of their powers. Or yeah. you know, these people, eighty two or eighty three. Yeah, eighty two would have been Number of the Beast. Yeah, so either way, I, mean, I think it was Number of the Beast. I think they were touring with Priest. Wow. I think they were touring. They were opening for Priest. Wow. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah you, you, you got them in at a great time then if you were singing for Iron Maiden in 82 or 83. How many songs did you do with them? Yeah, good question. You had just joined the band. So you had just joined which no. band? Nico had just joined Maiden. Oh, oh Nico. Right, so right, so right, this right, is right. peace of mind then. That's peace of mind. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. How many tunes did you jam with them? Just the one. Oh, okay. Child. We just did Rothschild. And that's all they wanted to do. They were, I think. I think we played Number of the Beast after that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good segue. <laughs> wow, if my memory serves me correctly. Man, we all that... want to hear another Iron Maiden song. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Maiden. 
we can play Iron Maiden with Iron Maiden in the room. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a great story. That, I love that. 